Well, we began to meet in a place called the Upper Room. And, and this day, I remember, Jesus was over to the side, and, and you know what he was doing? He was, he was washing the feet of one of the others. And when he saw me, he said, come over here I, and sit down. I want to wash your feet. And I looked at him, and I said, no. I said, I will not allow you to wash my feet. I am not worthy. May, may, may I confess something to you? I lied to Jesus. Yes, I lied to him. You see, in my day, washing feet is reserved for the lowest of the low. Did you know that? That even a slave, if the slave were ordered by his master to wash his master's feet, under our law, the slave could refuse and that slave could not be punished. Here was Jesus washing feet, something reserved for even lower than a slave. And I knew, I knew that if I allowed Jesus to wash my feet, I would be expected to wash others. You see, it was not a feeling of unworthiness that made me say no. It was my pride. Well, Jesus looked up and he said, he said, if you don't let me wash your feet, then I, you are not worthy to even follow me. Well, when he said that, I threw off my cloak and my tunic and I ran to him and I said, wash all of me then. And he started to laugh. He said, put your clothes back on. He said, I'll wash your feet. You take care of the rest of you. Well, that night we were reclining at table and Jesus said that this very night he was going to be arrested and been beaten. Well, I stood up and I said, no, you will not. I will not allow it. You'd think I would learn, wouldn't you? But Jesus looked at me and said this. He said, Simon, there's something I'll tell you of Jesus. When he was pleased with me, he called me Peter or, or, or Simon Peter. But when he was displeased, he called me Simon. And this night he said this. He says, Simon, hear me. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Well, I started to argue. I will never deny you. I started, And finally, I had enough sense to sit down. What did I tell you Jesus does when you argue with him? He just looks at you. Gives you plenty of time to realize that he might be right. So finally, I closed my mouth and I just sat back down. Well, later that night, we were at a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus asked a group of us just to kneel and, 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 and to pray with him. And I remember I was, I was off to the side and I was kneeling. And, and, and do you know that I fell asleep? Jesus came over, he nudged me on the shoulder and he said, Simon, he says, I've asked you to pray with me. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, I will pray with you. And I remember I started to pray and I noticed Jesus off to the side and, and I, I could hear that he started to cry. And so I was praying in earnest, but did you know I fell asleep again? I fell asleep. And Jesus came over and he nudged me again, I think a little harder this time. And he said, I've only asked this one thing of you, one thing to pray with me for one hour. Can you not do this? I said, yes, Jesus, I am so sorry. I will pray with you, yes. And I started to pray. I saw Jesus was praying. But do you know that I fell asleep for a third time? Yes. It was only when the guards came to arrest Jesus that I awoke. And I remember I got up and I saw that they were arresting Jesus and taking him away. Well, John came over to me and said, Simon, let us follow. Let's see where they take Jesus. I said, yes. And so we followed at a distance and we found that they took Jesus to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest. And John knew people there. His father, Zebedee, owned the fish company that we worked for. And so they sold fish to the home of Caiaphas. And so he was able to get us into the house. And we made our way to a, to a center courtyard. And as I was there, John said to me, he said, Simon, you just stay there by the fire. He says, warm yourself and I'll go and find where Jesus is. I said, all right. I, I stood there and John went and I'm warming myself. And all of a sudden, there was a woman off to the side and, and she just kept looking at me. And I remember I, I moved away and turned and she came closer and she said to me, she says, I know you, don't I? I said, I said, no. She says, you're a friend of the Nazarene. I said, no, I, I'm sorry. I don't know who you're talking about. And I turned away from her. But do you know, she came around to the other side and she looked me closer in the face and she said, yes, yes, I'm sure of it. You are a friend of the Nazarene. 
And I said to her, I'm telling you, I don't know who you're talking about. And then there was a man who was standing against the back wall, and he stepped forward. And I saw his face by the light of the fire. And he said, why do you lie to this woman? I know who you are. I have seen you with him many times. You are one of his closest. And I shouted at him. I said, I do not even know the man. As I said that, I heard the crowing of a cock. And I remembered what Jesus had said. And I remember as I turned, I saw Jesus on the stairs. He was walking up. He had already been beaten. And he was just looking at me. And I turned my back on him. I turned my back on Jesus. I ran out into the streets of Jerusalem and I dropped down to my knees and I begged God for forgiveness. I said, God, please forgive me. I want you to know something. And this is very important to me. There is little to no difference between what I did and what Judas Iscariot did. We both betrayed Jesus. The only difference is I dropped down to my knees and I begged God for forgiveness. I, I, I pray to this very day that my brother Judas had done the same. Well, the next, the next two days were the worst days of my life. Jesus was beaten many times. He was scourged. He was taken out and he was crucified. And where was I? Big, strong Peter, the rock, the one who was going to stop this from happening. I will not allow it, I used to say to him. Where was I? I was hiding like a frightened rabbit. I was hiding. I was not even there when they crucified my Lord. I was too frightened.